Dedicated to helping others through volunteerism, this next 17-year-old social entrepreneur, motivational speaker, and youth activist is passionate about inspiring and empowering young people across the globe to take action in support of local and global communities. Here's Brennan Wong. How's everybody doing today? But I know there's so many people out here today. It's just incredible. Wow. Like, honestly. And um, it's my pleasure to introduce such an inspiring young person. It's rare and just incredible to meet young people who motivate us to find time in our busy lives to change the world. Our next speaker is one of those very few people who is able to do that every single day. Initially creating a blog, callmehanna.ca, to voice her, voice her opinion on several issues related to the environment when she was only nine years old. Hannah Albert of Richmond Hill has earned many titles through advocacy for issues she is most passionate about, including the future of social media, eco-warrior, change maker, and activist, just, just to name a few. Now 12 years old, she is a immediately motivational speaker and Free the Children ambassador. For the past two years, she has spoken to hundreds of thousands of students across We Days in North America and she joined Spencer West and Everest as a featured speaker on the We Create Change Tour, traveling from coast to coast across this very great country. She became World Wildlife Federation Earth Hour's youngest team captain in history and is the official eco-blogger for the Juno Awards. Just to top it off, she's one of the 24 students who re received the Student Success Award from the York Region District School Board in 2013 and was recently named one of Post Magazine's Top 20 Under 20 where she was on the cover and was picked as number one in the city to watch. Since meeting Hannah at an event almost two years ago, I've had the pleasure of sharing the stage with her and working with her to launch various events. During this time, what has impressed me the most is not just her long list of achievements, despite not even having graduated elementary school yet, but she emanates just passion, and she's incredible in doing so through every action and every speech that she makes. Her words simply empower thousands to create change, and I'm sure she will do that today. Please welcome to the stage, Hannah Albert. Thank you, Vernon. Have you guys had an awesome day, or what? That's good, that's good. I, I have too. I am so excited to be here for We Can Change the World Day, you know? I really do believe that we can change the world. I happen to know a thing or two about creating change. I have been proud to represent Free the Children in my generation in stadiums and schools all over Canada. But there is always something really special about being part of the events at home. One of my greatest memories from the We Create Change Tour was my hometown show that was hosted by Richmond Hill High School. Many of you were there too. It was an extra special day because Premier Kathleen Wynne joined us. She shared a story that I will never forget. Kathleen Wynne was a student at Richmond Hill High School. It's hard for me to imagine this, but girls were not allowed to wear pants to school. I know, really, it was another time. <laughs> Anyways, she decided that it was unfair that she had to wear skirts to school, so she decided to do something about it. In a brave act of defiance, she wore pants to school one day. She was sent home with a note from the principal, explaining that girls were not permitted to wear pants to school. She returned to school the next day with a note from her parents, simply saying that they allowed her to wear pants to school. Again, she was sent home. This went on for some time. She held her ground and her parents supported her in what she understood to be her right to wear pants. It didn't take long for the school to reflect on the rules and they changed the dress code at Richmond Hill High School forever after. I don't think that back then they imagined that this pant-wearing activist would one day become the premier of Ontario. <laughs> What this story proves is that change starts with one person, one school, one community at a time. I have experienced this myself in our community too. After I went to my first WE Day in 2012, I was motivated 
to bring Free the Children's We Create Change campaign to my school. With the support of Mrs. Smith, my principal at Ross Stone, I got on the stage and made my very first speech. It was the year that Free the Children dedicated to water. It also happened to be the year that Canada was saying goodbye to the penny. We Create Change was all about collecting pennies. Every $25 collected would give clean water to one person in a developing community for life. Amazing things happened in our school community as the pennies piled up. It was motivating and unifying to know that every penny we collected wasn't just making a difference in another country, but it was making a difference in our school community too. Students who would never have spent time together now were. In working toward a common goal, our differences became less important and we became stronger. Together, we collected 97,500 pennies and provided clean water for 37 people for life. The students, teachers, school staff, and the larger community in Richmond Hill came together to make that happen. The following year, I launched We Scare Hunger at my school and also at my karate dojo, Energy Karate. We collected over three tons of food to donate to the York Region Food Bank, again proving that we come from a community that creates change locally and globally. Our community has a history of raising compassionate leaders that drive change. I already mentioned Premier Wynn, and there are two more outstanding citizens that have roots in York Region. Craig and Mark Kielberger, co-founders of Free the Children, Meet We, and Meet Day. They have inspired and empowered young people like me for almost 20 years. They have shown us all that we are never too young to make a difference. They have also shown us what happens when we come together as a community to stand up for what we believe in. Now, I want to try some show and tell. I want you to stand up if you know someone who has been bullied. If you have ever seen someone being bullied, or if you have ever been bullied yourself, go ahead, get it out of your seats. Take a look around you. It's overwhelming, isn't it? That so many of us have been touched by bullying. One in three Canadian teens are bullied. One in three. That's nearly two million young Canadians who are teased, feel powerless and excluded. But everyone's standing. I want you to recognize that you have the potential to be problem solvers, to stand up to bullying and to support each other. You can all sit down. <laughs> I want to tell you one more story about a small action that turned into a global movement. Once upon a time, 2007, in a land not so far away, Halifax, there was a boy getting ready for his first day of grade nine. It's kind of a big deal. First day, grade nine, in a new school with so many new people. You want to make a good first impression. You want to look good. You want to be cool. Cool, yeah. <laughs> His day didn't go as planned. He found himself to be the target of a group of boys who called him names and threatened to beat him up. Why? Because they didn't like his pink shirt. They tormented him, followed him around all day. It sucked. It didn't go unnoticed. Two students decided to do something about it. Travis and DJ were in grade 12 and had seen things like this going on in their school for years. Enough is enough. They went to the store and bought 50 pink t-shirts. They emailed everyone they knew and asked them to email everyone they knew. They said that tomorrow, we are creating a sea of pink. We're pink to stand with this boy. We're pink to stand up to the boys who bully him. When we stand together wearing pink, the bullies will be forced to step down. When Travis and DJ showed up the next day in pink, they saw that their message was heard. 
Hundreds of students showed up wearing pink. When that grade nine student walked in and saw all of his classmates in pink, he smiled and he sighed. He knew he was going to be okay. He was not alone. The pink shirt has become a symbol against bullying all over the world. Pink shirt day is on February 25th, and it empowers us to stand up against bullying. For those of you who are empowered and ready to make a difference, but don't know where to begin, wear a pink shirt this Wednesday and let people know why you are wearing it. Pink shirt day empowers us to be better citizens and create better, safer, and more inclusive communities. Change starts with one shirt, one pair of pants, one person, one school, one community at a time. Thank you.